Ladies and gentlemen, Amarosa has made an appearance on GMA this morning, trying to do damage control for her firing. She's claiming nothing happened and everything out here about her is lies. But here's the thing. April Ryan is not the only one that made this claim. There are several sources that said she was fired and had to be dragged out of the White House kicking and screaming. So she's debunking it. And in my opinion, I believe every bit of what April Ryan posted, usually when you resign from a job, you just resign and you do whatever little time that's left and you go on about your business. But she's out here doing damage control, which in my opinion said something definitely happened. But I'm going to let you listen to this interview and please tell me what you think. What's her stuff? She's over there with Michael. All right. Thank you, Jordan. Amarosa is here with me now. And thank you for joining me. I'm so glad to be here. Really appreciate it. And a lot of speculation about you leaving the White House. So let's get straight to it. <laughs> what happened? I resigned um, and I didn't do that in the residence as being reported. John Kelly and I sat down in the Situation Room, which is a very secure, very quiet room in the White House. And we had a very candid conversation. And I wanted to make the one year mark. That was one of the goals that I set out to. And then get back to my life. So you resigned, you weren't fired as the no. reported. And you know, I, I, I like, to hear all of these interesting tales, but I have to tell you that they're 100% false. And one of the things that I'd ask of those people who are making those assertions, since they assert that I did it so publicly, mm -hmm. is where are the pictures or videos? If I had confronted John Kelly, who was a very formidable person, um, it would garner enough attention for anyone in the room to at least take a picture or a video or something. The assertion that I would do that in front of 600 guests at a Christmas party and no one has reported that except for one individual who has a personal vendetta against me. And so I, I have to tell you, completely false, unverified reporting. And John Kelly and I had a very straightforward discussion about concerns that I had, issues that I raised. And as a result, I resigned and it will be taking place January the 20th when I leave this very interesting administration. So well, you're saying that all these reports are coming from one person, but you one speak person, to- No, let's, let's be clear, only one person. Only one person. No one else has reported what she's reporting. And this is the one person who has attacked me for the last year. And, and so you know that this is personal. And you're speaking and of John Kelly. What, what is your relationship like with him? What was your relationship like? John with him Kelly right was the uh, chief of staff. And as an assistant to the president, there's about 30 of us. We all report to the chief of staff. And when he came in, it was during a lot of turmoil. Um, and I stand out. I'm the only African American woman who sits at the table with those 30 assistants to the president. And we all had to adjust to his very different militaristic style. But I had a very clear outline, defined role for what I did. And every captain, every coach gets an opportunity to use a sports analogy to choose their team. Donald Trump chose me for his team. I'm not certain as John Kelly was starting to develop his team that that's someone that he wanted me to be on his team. Well, part of part of the thing you have because of your relationship with the president, they say you're able to walk. In, they say you're able to just walk into the Oval Office. When John Kelly comes in, he says no more of that. Did did that happen? Did he restrict your access? No. First of all, he brought order much needed order to the West Wing. Absolutely, if the president called us and wanted to talk to us, then we went to talk with him. I went into the Oval to talk with the president anytime. But he you had to be me. called in or were you able Absolutely. to Absolutely, the, the president, as you know, reads a lot of news. He watches a lot of news. If he had a question about something that he saw and he wanted information, he would call us. If I had to ask him something, I was very respectful of the process. Certainly I had more access than most and people had problems with that. People had problems with my 14 year relationship Mm -hmm. with this president, but I've always been loyal to him, straightforward, and I've provided him with the support that he's needed throughout this year in the White House. So whenever, when this did happen, did you try to enter the residence, <laughs> and residence and did that no. happen? Were the, you White House is the, the White House is the most secure place 
in the world. It is ridiculous to assert that anyone would be able to violate the security parameters that is outlined in the most secure building in the world. Mm -hmm. Not only is it ridiculous, but it is also absurd. And I would hope that people would recognize that there is a very good security infrastructure around this president. I wouldn't want anyone, nonetheless myself, to be able to run around or cause a disruption because it is secure for that reason. He is Truly, the president of the United States should be afforded that respect, and I've always been respectful. And you say you resigned. So when you resigned, the reports that you were escorted off the grounds. Were you escorted no, off? No, I was not. And in fact, Secret Service put out a statement because I think that they were bothered with the assertion that they were involved with any type of escorting or shutting me down, that sort of thing. And I think you should take the word of the US Secret Service over someone who has a personal vendetta to bring me down. And they personally gain by continuing to, to advance these Artists. But one thing the Secret Service did tweet out is that they deactivated your pass. So, so you get two passes. But, but if I'm they did that, you're going to work until the 20th. Why would they deactivate your pass? I'm now? glad you asked me that because there are three complexes in the White House. And as you are restricted or limited, your access to certain areas is restricted. And so obviously with me leaving, I wouldn't be given in advance the same type of access to classified information, to personal presidential communication. And so that access changed, which means that my past has to change. And so what they tweeted was correct. One, I was not escorted. You can believe the Secret Service of that. And they're deactivating my past, reducing and restricting it to areas that I can only go was absolutely correct. And it should be done in that way. As people's roles in the White House change, so should their access. What they tweet is correct. And I believe that CNN should correct their reporting based on the fact that Secret Service advanced that statement that I was not escorted, I did not cause a disruption. And I believe that their word is truly valid. And I wanna, I wanna ask you something about one of your friends said, Armstrong Williams. Mm -hmm. Armstrong Williams told the Washington Post you were unhappy with Trump's handling of Charlottesville and also his endorsement of Roy Moore. Is that um, true? You know, because I am serving until the 20th, I have to be very careful about how I answer this. But there were a lot of things that I observed during the last year that I was very unhappy with, that I was very uncomfortable with. Things that I observed, that I such, heard, such that I listened ass. to. I can expand upon it because I have to still go back and work with these individuals. But when I have a chance to tell my story, Michael, quite a story to tell as the only African American woman in this White House, as a senior staff and assistant to the president, I have seen things that have made me uncomfortable, that have upset me, that have affected me deeply and emotionally, that has affected my community and my people. And when I can tell my story, it is a profound story that I know the world will want to hear. But when if you were not to bring together um, you know, everyone, unify this country. That's what President Trump ran under the premise of unifying the country, bring, bringing in his words, blacks and whites together. Do you think he's done that effectively? Do you think that the job that you were put there to do was effective as well? Let me give you some perspective. This isn't my first time in the White House. I served in the Clinton administration. Mm -hmm. This is my second tour of duty serving my country and I take it very seriously. Every administration, they seek to unify the country. President Clinton had the commission on race because he was concerned about how divided the country was. At the end of that report, they said that they hadn't achieved their goal of unifying the country. That's after eight years. But, but I don't want to talk first, about President Clinton. I want to talk first, about our country now with President bridge. Trump though. Because people forget that I'm not new to this. I've been in politics for a very long time and I know what I'm doing. And what was trying to be done 20 years ago and what you're trying to say that we didn't accomplish in 11 months is a little ridiculous. We've been there 11 months to unify a nation that was truly divided by one of the most complicated elections in history. To do that in 11 months is almost impossible. But did President Trump try? I think that he tried in his own way. There are things that he could have done and things that this administration needs to continue to do to try to bring this country together. And hopefully they'll succeed for the good of this nation. And you talked about your tour of duty in the White House. One quick thing, you said Please. this summer, I fight on the front lines every day. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu where you're no longer at the table. So where does that leave you now? Uh, well, no, no longer at the table, but still engaged and involved in advancing this country, still making sure that I'm fighting for my community and fighting for issues that are passion to me. And remarkably trying to do that and be certain that I am remembered as somebody who's committed to advancing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no defense, but this woman is full of shit. What has Omarosa done to bring 
this community together? What has she done for the black community? This is a mystery because I don't know what the hell she's done. Does anybody know what Omarosa did for the black community? Okay, it must be invisible because I don't see it. Ladies and gentlemen, I just look at this interview as damage control. This woman is full of shit. She has a horrible reputation, not only overall, but even in the black community. If you remember every opportunity she was on camera at The View, she talked about a black person killing her father or somebody in her family. And then she did the same thing when she went before the black journalists. She did the same thing. Uh, my, my father was killed by a black man or somebody, or brother or somebody was killed by a black man. How the hell does that bring us together? You know, she shitted on the black community every chance she could get. Now, I'm going to leave this, and you can be the judge of whether you believe her or not, but I'm just telling you, I'm walking away from this interview, and I don't believe a damn thing that she sat there and said She's doing a cover my ass session on TV. Please leave your comment and subscribe. And don't forget to hit on that notification bell, ladies and gentlemen. Peace.